Roaming the Earth around 430,000 years ago, the Neanderthals were perhaps the ultimate match for our ancient ancestors, rivaling them in everything from tools to culture and even dominance over the land. There was really no stopping this advanced race of ancient hominins. That was until 37,000 years ago, when they all suddenly vanished. But why? This species had everything it took to conquer the Earth. So why did they suddenly all die out? What could have caused it? And did we modern humans somehow lead to the extinction of one of the most advanced hominins ever? The extinction of Neanderthals is perhaps one of the most multifaceted extinctions of prehistoric Earth. It genuinely seemed like everything was out to get them. From the climate, to other hominins, and even their own biology, everything played a huge role in their demise. Strangely enough, the Neanderthals' time on Earth could best be described as an extensive game of dodgeball. However, instead of dodging red balls, the Neanderthals were narrowly dodging extinction. A major reason for this was the climate. See, the climate during their period was much like ours today, only much more unstable. Think about it. Today, the average July temperature in France this year was between 68 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, or 20 to 28 degrees Celsius. 45,000 years ago, this temperature was not that different, as the average temperature was between 60 to 71 degrees Fahrenheit, or 16 to 22 degrees Celsius. Colder, yes, but the average temperature was still very hospitable. The only problem here was that this average temperature could turn into a cold snap that would last hundreds of years. To make matters worse, it could do this in less than a month, with little to no warning. The climate during the Pleistocene Epoch was characterized by frequent and abrupt climatic changes, including glacial and interglacial periods. One example of this cold front was the marine isotope stage, MIS-4, which took place approximately 71,000 to 57,000 years ago. Part of the complex glacial and interglacial cycles that have shaped the Earth's climate over millions of years, the MIS-4 significantly cooled down the world, leading to the expansion of ice sheets across large parts of North America and Eurasia. Of course, this event quickly had an effect on the environment, as the extensive ice sheets and glaciers led to lower sea levels, as vast amounts of water were locked up in the ice. This cooling phase also brought drier conditions to many regions, affecting vegetation patterns and the availability of resources for both animals and humans. The Neanderthals' MIS-4 was a nightmare, as the harsh climate forced them to adapt in several ways to survive. See, normally the Neanderthals were well suited to cold environments, with robust physiques that helped them conserve heat. However, the extreme conditions of MIS-4 required even greater resilience and adaptability than they had ever shown. Rising up to the challenge, the Neanderthals developed sophisticated tools and hunting strategies to cope with the scarcity of large-game animals, which were their primary food source. But that wasn't all, as they also had to diversify their diet, incorporating more plant-based foods and smaller animals to supplement their nutrition. As with almost all of human history, social cooperation and resource sharing within Neanderthal groups likely played a crucial role in their survival. This is because these communities needed to support each other during periods of scarcity, and they did. Taking things a bit further, the Neanderthals demonstrated remarkable mobility as they migrated to more hospitable areas when necessary. Some groups moved southward to regions with milder climates and more abundant resources, while others took refuge in ice-free pockets known as refugia. Thankfully, these refugia provided relatively stable environments where Neanderthal populations could persist, despite the broader climatic challenges. Another climatic event that nearly took the Neanderthals off the map was the Toba super eruption. Taking place around 74,000 years ago, this eruption was one of the most colossal volcanic events in Earth's history. Originating from present-day Indonesia, this cataclysmic eruption affected the world in ways no one expected, destroying ecosystems and rewriting climates. The eruption released vast quantities of ash and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, creating a veil of particles that significantly reduced sunlight reaching the Earth's surface. As you can imagine, the immediate aftermath of the Toba super eruption was a dramatic and rapid cooling of the planet, often referred to as a volcanic winter. 
This winter caused global temperatures to drop by several degrees Celsius, leading to severe disruptions in weather patterns and environmental conditions. The worst part is that the volcanic winter likely lasted for several years, during which time the Earth's climate was extremely cold, dry, and almost impossible to live in. For Neanderthals, the Toba super eruption event was a frozen hell. The drastic cooling and environmental changes disrupted their traditional food sources. The large herbivores, which Neanderthals relied upon for sustenance, became scarce, as their habitats were altered or destroyed by the changing climate. As usual, the reduced availability of plant and animal resources forced Neanderthal groups to adapt quickly to their new reality. In response to these harsh conditions, Neanderthals made the same adaptations they later made for MIS-4. The event was so bad that genetic evidence suggests that the Toba super eruption caused a population bottleneck in both Neanderthals and early modern humans. This bottleneck significantly reduced their numbers, but by sheer determination, some groups managed to survive and eventually recover once the climate began to stabilize. Sadly, you can't always cheat extinction, and one particular event put a nail in the Neanderthal coffin. The eruption of the volcano in the Bay of Pozzaloli near present-day Naples, Italy, occurred 39,000 years ago. This eruption was no doubt one of the most significant volcanic events in European prehistory. Known as the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption, it released massive amounts of volcanic ash and gases into the atmosphere, causing widespread climatic and environmental disruption. Blocking the sunlight, the eruption sent out a vast plume of ash and pumice that blanketed much of southern and eastern Europe, covering large areas with thick deposits. This ashfall devastated local ecosystems, destroying vegetation and contaminating water sources. The ashes spread as far as Asia, and in many archaeological sites, it has been found to be a divide between when the Neanderthal fossils stop and the Homo sapien fossil begins. But that wasn't all, because a few years later, large glaciers broke the Arctic ice sheets in a Heinrich event that cooled down the Earth even more. Named Heinrich Event 4, the event occurred around 38,000 years ago and was marked by massive discharges of icebergs into the North Atlantic, resulting from the collapse of ice sheets. These icebergs carried and deposited large amounts of rock debris into the ocean, disrupting ocean currents and causing unprecedented climatic cooling. The drop in temperatures quickly led to harsher environmental conditions, further challenging the survival of Neanderthals and other contemporary human populations. Sadly, this time the Neanderthal population could not react fast enough and soon found themselves face to face with extinction. But it wasn't only the climate that led to their downfall, as even their own anatomy had a role to play in their eventual fall. Although very close to ours, the Neanderthal's anatomy is actually quite different from ours. For one, Neanderthals had a robust and muscular build, which required a high caloric intake to sustain. Estimates suggest they needed around 4,000 to 5,000 calories per day, particularly in the cold climates they often inhabited. This made them heavily dependent on large game animals for food. According to estimates, Neanderthals needed almost double the calories Homo sapiens needed. This was a problem, especially during periods of climatic instability, when these animals became scarce and Neanderthals struggled to meet their energy needs. But that wasn't all, as their life cycle was also different from that of modern humans. See, Neanderthals matured faster, reaching adulthood by their late teens, in fact, a 12-year-old fossil found in France was found to have matured as much as a 16-year-old Homo sapiens. To make things even worse, only a few Neanderthal fossils have been found to have lived over 40 years. As you would expect, this rapid maturation left them with less time for extended childhood learning and socialization. They essentially missed out on crucial parts of developing complex skills and social networks, not to mention shorter lifespans which reduced the period during which they could contribute to their group and transmit knowledge to younger generations. Another thing that worked against the Neanderthals was their habitat preferences. See, Neanderthals were adapted to living in forested environments where they hunted large game. But as the climate fluctuated and forests retreated, they were less equipped to exploit open plains and grasslands, compared to Homo sapiens, who were more versatile and could adapt to a broader range of environments. But by far the biggest problem was their genetic diversity. 
or rather, their lack of it. See, the Neanderthals had low genetic variation, making them more susceptible to diseases and less able to adapt to environmental changes. As such, small, isolated populations were particularly vulnerable to inbreeding, leading to a higher prevalence of genetic disorders and reduced overall fitness. But that wasn't the only way breeding led to the Neanderthals' demise. In fact, their relations with us played a major role in their eventual extinction. It's important to note that when Homo sapiens met Neanderthals, the species was already reducing in population. See, overlapping in places like France and Spain, we arrived about 43,000 years ago. With us, we brought sophisticated tools, sculptures, music, and of course, competition. Much like the Neanderthals, the first wave of Homo sapiens, the Orugangian culture, preferred the woods. Luckily at the time, there was a small population of both species, and even small interactions, with estimates saying the ratio was one person per 1,076,391 square feet, or 100 square kilometers. 6,000 years later, around 37,000 years ago, the Neanderthals were suddenly wiped out. But what did the Homo sapiens do? Well, it boiled down to good old competition, survival of the fittest. Experts today claim the Homo sapiens were better at adapting to colder climates, thanks to tools and technology. But that aside, they were also better at adjusting, especially as they ate a lot of fish and were good fishers. They also had boats, expanded across coastal routes, and sometimes migrated along the routes of herd animals. But that was just one side of the picture, as when we did meet the Neanderthals, our relationship with them led to their doom. See, unlike what you would expect, there is no record of a battle between the two species. However, there is evidence of the two species interbreeding. The earliest known encounters between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens occurred around 100,000 years ago in the Middle East. Fossil evidence from sites such as the School and Kavze Caves in Israel suggests that both species coexisted in this region for some time. During these early encounters, interbreeding likely took place, introducing Neanderthal genes into the early Homo sapiens population. Shockingly, this gene flow provided Homo sapiens with beneficial genetic traits, such as immune system enhancements, which helped them adapt to new environments as they spread out of Africa. But sadly, it led to the demise of the Neanderthal. After the Middle East encounter, another significant period of interbreeding occurred, around 45,000 to 50,000 years ago, when Homo sapiens began to migrate into southern Europe. Evidence from various archaeological sites shows that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens overlapped in regions such as present-day France, Spain, and Italy. Genetic studies have even shown that interbreeding during this period led to the integration of more Neanderthal DNA into the expanding Homo sapiens populations. However, this interbreeding, unlike the first one, likely caused the two species to compete for the same resource relationships, including mating. The final significant period of interbreeding between the two species took place around 40,000 to 45,000 years ago in Northern Europe. As Homo sapiens continued to migrate and expand their territory, they encountered Neanderthals living in colder, more challenging environments. Meeting at sites such as the Vindija Cave in Croatia, this last wave of interbreeding further integrated the Neanderthal genetic material into the Homo sapiens gene pool. In the end, these periods of interbreeding had profound effects on both species. For Homo sapiens, the incorporation of Neanderthal genes provided certain advantages, such as improved immune responses and adaptations to colder climates. However, for the Neanderthals, the consequences were more detrimental. See, the interbreeding and subsequent gene flow contributed to their gradual decline in several ways. As Neanderthal genes were absorbed into the larger Homo sapiens populations, Neanderthals themselves were gradually getting assimilated. This process sadly reduced the number of distinct Neanderthal individuals over time, leading to their eventual disappearance as a separate species. But that wasn't all, because as mentioned before, interbreeding and cohabitation also meant direct competition for resources. Homo sapiens, with their more advanced tools, social structures, and adaptability, often outcompeted Neanderthals for food and shelter. This competition strained the Neanderthal populations, making survival increasingly difficult. Making things worse, this close contact and interbreeding likely led to the exchange of pathogens between the two species. This would have been a problem, 
as Neanderthals, with their limited genetic diversity, would have been more vulnerable to diseases introduced by Homo sapiens. Finally, although the Neanderthals were capable of innovation, they sadly did not advance as rapidly as Homo sapiens in terms of technology and culture. The superior tools and social organization of Homo sapiens gave them an edge in survival, further disadvantaging Neanderthals. But even though they disappeared, the ever-resistant Neanderthals still found a way to live on to this day. The Neanderthals were first recognized in 1829, but were not recognized by scientists as possible human ancestors until the late 19th century, after the discovery of more fossils. Since then, thousands of remarkable Neanderthal fossils have been unearthed across Europe and the Middle East, representing hundreds of individuals. The earliest known Neanderthal remains were found by Dutch-Belgian prehistorian Philippe Charles Schmeling in 1829, at what we now call the Schmeling Caves in Belgium. There he discovered a child's skull cap named Ingus II, along with other bones that left him puzzled. Schmerling thought the bones belonged to a poorly developed human buried alongside extinct animals. Time would pass, and he would soon realize he had discovered a new species of hominin. First appearing approximately 350,000 to 400,000 years ago, the oldest known Neanderthal fossil is the skull fragment called Apodema II, found in the Apodema Cave in Greece. This extremely old fossil dates back to around 200,000 years ago, and since its discovery, it has provided valuable insights into the early presence of Neanderthals in Europe. The Neanderthals roamed the Earth for quite a while. The youngest known Neanderthal fossils are from the site of the Vindija Cave in Croatia. These fossils, dated to around 40,000 years ago, mark the period when Neanderthals were gradually being replaced by modern humans, Homo sapiens, in Europe. Today, the Vindija cave fossils are some of the last evidence of Neanderthals before their extinction. Although Neanderthals disappeared around 40,000 years ago, their legacy continues in the DNA of modern humans. See, even though interbreeding with Homo sapiens led to their demise, it also led to their integration into the Homo sapiens gene pool. Influencing various aspects of our biology and health, modern humans of non-African descent carry about 1 to 2% Neanderthal DNA. Of course, this genetic inheritance varies among individuals and different populations, as it reflects multiple ancient interbreeding events. One significant contribution of Neanderthal DNA to modern humans is enhanced immunity, as their genes provide resistance to certain pathogens. These genes helped our ancestors survive in new environments by improving their ability to fight infections. But that's not all, as the Neanderthal DNA has contributed to traits like skin pigmentation and keratin production, aiding adaptation to different climates and helping early humans survive in diverse environments. But not all Neanderthal genes are good, as while some Neanderthal genes are beneficial, others are linked to modern health conditions like type 2 diabetes, Crohn's disease, and even depression. Studies even show that Neanderthal genes affect sleep patterns, metabolism, and responses to UV radiation. The Neanderthal DNA may also impact cognitive and behavioral traits. Some gene variants affect brain function, suggesting these ancient genes helped shape human behavior and intelligence. A species marked by resilience and adaptation, the Neanderthals are by far one of the most intriguing hominids to ever walk the Earth. Living through some of the worst time periods ever, they just might also be one of the most unlucky hominids ever. From global catastrophe, to their own anatomy, the Neanderthals' demise was perhaps almost always imminent. However, regardless of their situation, the Neanderthals are proof of just how special we are as Homo sapiens, as we lived through a good amount of these conditions, and perhaps even worse. But unlike our ancient cousins, we managed to pull through and truly conquer the Earth. But what do you think? Are Neanderthals really unlucky? Would you like to meet a Neanderthal? And did our last interbreeding with them ultimately do more harm than good? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. While you're at it, why not hit the like and subscribe buttons to learn all about the living wonders of prehistoric times, to dive into the fascinating history of Neanderthals, or discover how Homo sapiens conquered the Earth. Click on one of these videos. You'll definitely enjoy them. Until next time, stay curious.